Was Wavy Xiaojun being fat phobic towards Kun? More ridiculous dating rumors. This time with BTS's RM and S was Karina. But will this be Red Velvet's last comeback? YG sentenced to prison a super K-pop collab and so much more in today's episode of Totally Legit K-pop News with me, Angelina. Do you like the new logo? We're rebranding. Are you excited for merch? Hold your horses. If you're interested, then please keep on watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and share this video with friends you don't have. Follow me on all my social media accounts you can support me on Patreon. And of course, feel free to skip through to whatever segment interests you the most. Oh. Wavy have recently made their comeback with On My Youth, and of course the group released a music video reaction to this comeback on their own YouTube channel. However, some people are taking issue with a comment that Xiaojun made towards Kun that a lot of people are calling out as fatphobic. So let's take a look at the video in question. <laughs> So basically, Kun says, I went down on the floor. Then Ten asks, what is he doing? We hear the response he fell to which Xiaojun says must have been too heavy. So then we see this exchange of Kun looking over to Xiaojun. Uh, right here and the captions literally say looking kindly so of course these are the official translations on their own youtube channel right and if we go to their twitter account where they share the link to this youtube video here's what some people are saying it's 2023 let's all stop making these unsolicited way comments towards kun it has happened several times this year and even if they're meant to be jokes it's not funny also think of what the fans may feel when you make these comments Hope you guys stop and learn. Hope you realize that making jokes and comments, even if they are meant in a lighthearted manner, whatever that means, is not and will never be okay. You have so many impressionable fans who might be going through their own body issues and seeing people they love and idolize make jokes about their very insecurity will affect them heavily. Not to mention how your member has repeatedly expressed how these jokes make him uncomfortable. The body shaming fat jokes were not funny then, now, or ever. Please at least learn. Please, it's time to stop with the weight jokes, Kun already stated that he feels uncomfortable and self-conscious about it. It's really disrespectful. I hope the members can understand and respect boundaries. Can y'all leave Kun alone? Oh my god. So of course we have some fans who are really upset about the comment, especially seeing Kun look over to Xiaojun after the comment, kind of like side-eyeing him. Now of course in response to this we do have fans you know asking the members to please stop this behavior but we also have people asking fans to send Kun more support right now. For example we are encouraging fans to send positive and cheerful messages to Kun with all of his social media accounts, Lysen, Bubble, Instagram, Weibo, especially his super topic SoundCloud as he often checks them every single day. Everyone can also leave comments to Wavy's recent content. If you have Bubble, please send Kun a kind and supportive message. Tell him he is amazing, his talent is top tier, he has a beautiful body, he is appreciated so very much. Send him all your love today and every day. Of course, let's discuss this in the comments. Let me know what you think of this whole issue. Personally, I didn't get it at first. I was like, he fell because he's too heavy? What does that even mean? I mean, I'm not gonna lie, I'm not gonna pretend like I understood the comment inherently, do you know what I mean? Like, I don't have a grasp on the language to, you know, get the little intricacies. I was like, is it because his heart was too heavy? The emotions were too heavy? So let me know if you think there's any possibility that there was a different meaning unrelated to weight in regards to that comment, or if you think the context of Kun side-eyeing him pretty much solidifies it. Remember in my last video where I said like, I love me a good dating rumor, especially when it's ridiculous. Well, guess what? The universe heard, <laughs> heard me. I don't know. I think I manifested this. I'm actually a little sorry. We have BTS's RM and S was Karina in some dating rumors recently. And I'm really excited to find out why. Like, it's like, I'm like a kid at Christmas, like opening a present. I want to find out why people are saying this. Cause the more ridiculous, the better. Netizens find BTS BTS's RM and S's Karina dating evidence ridiculous. Yes, I love it. Yes, give me some ridicule. So posted on an online forum, this evidence is based on the friendship between RM and another artist and Karina's interest in said artist. Okay. So basically they go on to say that Karina has been interested in a band recently. As we can see, she's seemingly posting the song to her stories. And RM is uh, known to be a friend of the lead singer of that band. Wow. They even collaborated together on her single Smoke Sprite last year. Earlier this year, sorry. Here's the evidence of that. Is that literally it? Nor. Oh, 
There's a little bit more. Additional photos posted on the forum as evidence show both RM and Karina sharing black and white pictures of themselves with Soyun, of course, the lead singer. Ooh, the similarities between the photos such as Angle and Filter were brought to attention. So here's RM's photo with the lead singer and let's check out Karina's. <gasps> Were they at the same place at the same time? In this big old world? Then lastly, in the dating evidence, RM attended this event where Espa performed. So the article goes on to say that this might be the most questionable and unconvincing evidence to date. Come on, we've seen some stuff. They posted similar photos at least. Like that's something. <laughs> Like that's a straw to grasp onto. I literally covered a story once where someone posted a picture of Hyunin Kai <laughs> Where in the background, there may or may not have been a cutout of produce era Taewon. And based off of that and other ridiculous evidence, people thought that Pongkyo and Taewon were dating. I'm just saying we've seen more ridiculous things. That's it. So here are some comments on the post. Or maybe she's dating Jenny. Jenny was there too. Karina stands Sonia Shde. Their color is pink. And what's Jenny's group called? Black pink. She thinks she's got everyone fooled by being so blindingly beautiful and talented, but I'm so onto her. Me too. She can't fool me. These trolls have to be using a random name generator at this point. This just ruined my day. Oh no. Kaza and Yunjin dating is more believable than this. They were at that party too. Also taking pics at that same angle. Duh, that's a photo booth. And you know what? We might as well bring Jenny into this because she too. <laughs> get this so people are really celebrating the fact that they spotted jenny and rm in the same photo and this has to do with this very same band actually so are you ready for the rm x jenny photo in question there we have it yeah not even in the same photo technically but it's a photo within a photo and they're in there both within the same photo within photos so there's that <laughs> let me know your thoughts as always but also, most importantly, let me know what is the most ridiculous dating rumor you've ever heard in K-pop. Because like I mentioned before, don't know how we got to that. <laughs> they also mentioned that he was gone off of the V app when Eyes One disbanded. So that's personally my favorite ridiculous dating rumor. Now, of course, Red Velvet are gearing up for their comeback with Chill Kill or Still Kill, as we've seen in some misspellings in the album details that were revealed by SM Entertainment and criticized by fans previously. However, why do fans think this is going to be their last comeback? I mean, as a K-pop fan, it is actually your duty if you look in the k-pop rules of conduct it's literally written always anticipate your faves disbandment because it could happen at any time i don't make the rules even though i made that up but i mean this isn't even the first time this year that we've had rumors of red velvet disbanding there was rumors that irene didn't renew her contract which was then dispelled or no actually nobody dispelled that maybe she didn't renew it we actually don't know as of now we just know that red velvet are having a comeback but what does that mean but i digress here's why people were thinking that this might be red velvet let's come back of course since they're having a comeback naturally they're changing profile pictures they're changing their bios and everything so this is their old bio we see red velvet official red velvet the river festival 2022 birthday and we can also see all of the lovely highlights below however more recently it was changed to this it's just a story of us and then their name even changing to happy ending it's just a story of us so this has led people to wonder if this would be their last comeback. I mean, naturally. And I say naturally because you actually never know. It could just hit you like that and then suddenly your faves have disbanded, never to be seen again. So here's what some K-Netizens had to say in response to this. It's their concept. Even during Dum Dum, they shared on Instagram feed that they would upload teasers. There's no group in SM that is as conceptual as Red Velvet. So SM won't do anything ridiculous like getting rid of Red Velvet. Would this be their last, really? It won't be their last for sure. It must be their concept. It can't be. It's only their third full album. How can it be their last? It's definitely their concept. It won't be their last. Said every K-pop fan before their faves disbanded. <laughs> but here are some international stands comments. People have been calling every comeback since Psycho the last comeback. Are y'all not tired? give it up for the love of god happy ending does sound ominous though there's no group in sm as conceptual as red velvet so sm won't do anything ridiculous like getting rid of red velvet have people forgotten about fx i definitely think it is a concept though luckily for us we don't have to wonder for too long because sm actually responded to this the phrase happy ending in the profile was changed to match the concept of the new album and that's that's literally it i mean not that i trust any company but 
I do have to agree, however, that K-pop fans are always crying that it's gonna be so-and-so's last comeback. And they'll say it with like such confidence too, like this idol seems tired. Like, of course I would rather them like continue on. I love them, but like I, they've been looking tired for a while now. It wouldn't be surprised. Like I have seen, I've heard it all. So on that note, I would love to ask you guys, what is your favorite disbandment song? I'm gonna have to go with 21's Goodbye because it was quite intentional as a disbandment song, literally saying, goodbye to everyone but also giving hope you know until we meet again but also kind of a stab because minzy wasn't even there but it's different in comparison to other disbandment songs because you knew it would essentially be the last one some disbandment songs you just you don't know it's the last so of course let me know your faves Previously, we announced a super exciting collaboration between members of IVE, ESPA, and G Idol. However, we didn't know exactly who until today. So the three idols are actually Soyeon of G Idol, Wonyoung from IVE, and Karina of ESPA. Let's hear a little snippet of it. Ow! If that isn't a Bruno Mars song, In and down in the city, too hot. Dun, dun. So here's what some K netizens think of this lineup. Dong Wan Young is the one top. Karina is done for. Her legs and arms are so short, she'll be so comparable right off the bat. What does that even mean? No, what do you know? Not my Karina. They don't have a single vocal. This isn't certain yet, though. Even if people want them to remove this article and MUSB's account closes, this doesn't change the fact that this is released officially. So Jun Soyeon alone will take care of dancing, rapping, and singing. Doesn't surprise me. This doesn't surprise me that this is going to cause fan wars. <laughs> Absolutely. Even reading some international stand comments, uh, everyone's just like, um, it should have been so-and-so. It should have been these people. It should have been this person and this person. <laughs> This comment, they're boob and booty hot though, only one boob each. <laughs> I need a minute, oh my god, <laughs> just only one boob each. <laughs> Three of the most criticized fourth gen idols in a unit, this is gonna get messy. It already has, trust me. But like, what do they mean that Karina is short? Isn't Soyeon short? Like, isn't it going to be like Soyeon and Karina and then Wonyoung? Is that what they, I don't get it. What do you mean? What does the comment mean? Anyways, let me know your thoughts on the lineup. Are you excited about it? Are you worried <laughs> for the potential of fan wars, which have already started to happen anyways? On that ESPA note, it seems that people are really not happy with SM's plans for ESPA in 2024. So they recently released their plans, of course, and they plan to release a full-length English album. But what about a full-length Korean album? Here are some comments. ESPA's full-length and single in the first quarter. Bring it. But a full English album? Sai, what do they mean English full-length album? They don't even have a Korean full-length album. Sai, are they crazy? What are they doing? Ah, uh, everything would have been fine if they didn't reveal plans for the English full-length album. The crazies are lit right now after hearing the news. English full-length album my ass. Now of course we've heard in the news a lot that you know people have been noticing a lot more English and Korean songs, a lot more English releases. So I'm curious about your thoughts of that. Do you think it's unnecessary? Do you love it? Hate it? Let me know. So we have some breaking news today because Yan Hyun Suk of YG Entertainment, of course, has been sentenced to prison time. So here we have the article, YG Entertainment's Yan Hyun Suk sentenced to six months imprisonment and a year of probation. So what did he do? So it seems that like he was convicted in an appeal court on allegations of threatening retaliation for which the court sentenced him to six months of imprisonment and one year probation. So on November 8th, the Seoul High Court's Criminal Division 60 conducted an appeal hearing hearing regarding Yan Hyun Suk's offenses against the act on the enhanced punishment for certain crimes, focusing on charges associated with threats of retaliation. Now, it seems that there was a former non-guilty verdict for this, which was reversed. I was going to say, it feels like it's been so long that we've been hearing about YG's legal issues like the man himself. And that's because these charges date back to August 2016, where it was claimed that Yang Hyun Suk endeavored to curtail an investigation by intimidating and coercing public interest informant Han Seo Hee. This was concerning an allegation that BI, a former YG member of the group Icon, had purchased and consumed 
So this is what the court said. The prosecution lodged an appeal purporting the victim's statement was credible. Nonetheless, the amendments to the indictments involved a forced interview with Yan Hyun Sok, hampering the defendant's right to defense. The court further explained that the successful establishment of a threat could only transpire if the victim was on the receiving end of a specific harm. In closing their judgment on Yan Hyun Sok and Mr. Kim with a deferred sentence, the court noted, as the representative of YG, he misused his social standing and exercised dominance over BIV reprimanding him and therefore he is deemed guilty. So here are some comments under the article. How to be famous without being a celebrity or politician or scientist? Be a Han so -hee. In closing their judgment on Yan Hyun Sook and Mr. Kim with a deferred sentence. He's not going to jail. The Korean judicial system loves this concept of deferring sentences to pretend like punishment was meted out, but in actuality is a backdoor for rich and powerful to escape. Deferred sentence? So he's not going to prison for six months? He's got probation for a year, which is nothing. So of course, let me know your thoughts in the comments. Now let's move on to a little segment I like to call K-pop shenanigans, which are fun little things that have happened in K-pop recently. Flatus are set to debut a new boy group nine years after Seventeen's debut. Hyanna has released new profile pictures under her new agency, so I thought we could check them out because everybody is talking about them. Not her smirking! <gasps> Oh, did she get some tattoos removed? I thought she was a lot more heavily tattooed than that. There's no way. She must have covered them, right? How is she so tattoo free? On that note, have you seen ATZ's teasers? We have to we'll have to look at them because they're so colorful and beautiful and I am so excited. The colors are absolutely stunning. <gasps> Oh my god. Good lord. I am so excited for this. These look absolutely stunning and beautiful. It's This is literally giving Alice in Wonderland. That looks like a cat's tail behind him. The prince that you are, Pak Sung Absolute The fur behind them. <laughs> and then we have Ive who announced a world tour. Um, that's not actually a world tour. I reserve the right to be critical of this because... What in the world? No, but seriously, there's literally so many stops. And do you think Canada is part of any of them? Absolutely not. I literally sent this to my group chat where one third of us is American. And I said, I will never forgive you for being American. This is unfair. This is cruel. If your city is on the list, I wish you the very best. Then we have Sujin who released her music video for Agassi, which I actually did a music video reaction to for my patrons, and Kiss of Life who released their music video for Bad News. As for a K-pop song of the day, I have What Is Love by Twice that has been in my head all day. It doesn't really need an introduction. It's literally one of Twice's best songs in my opinion. <laughs> It's just, it's just so innocent and cute and talking about like, you know, w wondering what love could feel like and describing it in such a cute way. Is it sweet like candy? Like, it's just so, I mean, I don't need to explain to you why Twice is What Is Love is amazing, right? I wanna know. And of course, one of their best music videos. <laughs> so beautiful my face literally hurts from smiling so much the song makes me so happy inside so of course that's our k-pop song of the day and i recommend it highly so we do have some tiktoks i'm excited to show you show you some tiktoks of course everything we talked about all links will be in the description as well as every single tiktok that i react to today so of course check them out i don't know why this was so funny but the comments made it even better like no red velvet don't outdo the communist manifesto <laughs> like what <laughs> It's just so I don't know why that was so funny to me. And then the comments as well. Red Velvet could write manifesto, but Karl Marx couldn't write Zimzelip. Should have sung this in the North Korea stage. Karl Marx would have probably stand Red Velvet. Actually, few people know that this song was actually composed to be performed by Karl Marx, but he said in a quote, "It's too communist for me." <laughs> this. <gasps> okay, guys. I want to take a shower with him. No, I mean. No, I mean. <laughs> Not a shower. I want to take a shower with him. No, I mean, I mean, I mean, one of them is a pet. Oh my god, that sand clip. Every I've seen it absolutely everywhere. <laughs> no, not a shower. <laughs> I love it. Can someone tell me what Mingi has in his 
bag. I thought the same. What's in there? <laughs> I know someone's gonna be like, um, it's none of your, it's a joke. It's a joke. Let me joke in peace. <gasps> Hank. Hank, without promotion, pre-debut, debuts before Baby Monster. Do you guys remember there was like this makeup artist who like signed with, well, I don't even remember, but like she made a music video before Blackpink had a comeback and everyone was up in arms and so mad about it. Like, Pony, I think. Everyone was so mad. The same thing for Hank now. Hank is literally a YG artist. <laughs> I need to stop that because my dogs are gonna they're gonna hear it and it's not gonna be pretty i need to i want to see yg artists i don't want anyone to be like you're stupid to think hank is actually there crunk is literally there what if hank was hank isn't someone edited that but that would have been so cute i didn't think yg would do that but right it would have been so cute why is g dragon still there it would have been cute he should be there justice for hank he <laughs> doesn't even have his own profile <laughs> <laughs> why was he so loud with it <laughs> like kids have tinier eardrums he could have i'm kidding obviously obviously it was pretty funny 80s comeback y'all these chickens have a hold on me I literally love those chickens so much. <laughs> I keep coming across these like 80s videos with like other people's voices. May I approach the bench? <laughs> what did you say? I said, may I approach the bench? Why does he sound like David Attenborough? He literally sounds like David Attenborough. Like he's about to narrate a nature documentary. May I approach the bitch? So that is all I've got for you today. Don't forget to like, comment, and share this video with friends you don't have. These are the lovely individuals who support my channel on a monthly basis. Thank you so much. It means the world to me. As for me, I'm gonna get going. So I'll see you guys next time. Bye. I wanna know. They could never love like a girl does. Like a girl does. Like, like go.